Second step is using the semi-variogram model. So one information you need to have is uh, which semi-variogram we have. We take the, those data, we took the, the last, the, semi, the empirical semi-variogram you, you, you have just seen, and uh, we, are, we are going to fit it. The configuration of the of the model from the graphical point of view is this one. So vector reader times series reader, we know the experimental diagram. Now the output instead of being written directly with the reader goes to the theoretic theoretical semi-variogram estimation and use this particles form for uh, estimating the parameters. There are, here there are, uh, uh, there are the input, the output, output parameter and some other service parameter for uh, controlling the number of iterations in the particle swarm to obtain the optimization and so on. Okay, we, we have an input the time series of distance, the name of the theoretical model. We choose the parameter of the model, which are three in this case. Nugget, seal, and range. Range is the distance over which the semi-variogram uh, saturates the, the, the seal. And then we have the time series of theoretical semi-variogram. How many models do we have? Those one. 11. Bessel exponential, exponential is the one you mostly use, circular, Gaussian. Yes, that is the Gaussian. Whole, linear, logarithmic, theta spherical, periodic, power, spherical. My guys usually like, like Bessel because it has a lot of parameters. <laughs> and so I fit. Uh, it is quite flexible. So how is the, the same file in this case? Always the same thing. The definition of the start data of end age. The, the components are the reader of the distance, the reader of the variogram. Theoretically, in this case, the core is this one. And actually, it is not the same configuration that uh, I showed you before, because here, uh, here I I am cheating because here I put all together, but if I put the configuration like this one, I don't have any file with the theoretical, uh, with the exper experimental semi -variable. I can actually take the output of this if I want. I can both doing this and also create the file. So I attach to distances HM and the uh, experimental variogram HM a further component and take the output and write it. In this case, uh, I remind you, the, assume that you take the, over there the output and you write them to the disk. All of this, the writing of the theoretical semi biogram and the writing and the writing process uh, are independent. So they go in parallel. They, they automatically go into cores of your, of, of your computer without you take care of it. Then the, the simulation file more or less are the same of before. And uh, the 60 regards the, the number of the the time steps, there is nothing particularly new with respect to before. So I don't stay here to comment even more. And uh, okay, this is the connection, which is, you know, it's not exactly the same one that I showed you before, before but just take the last part of it. Yeah, in practice, in practice what we do, in practice we can do very long chains. 
a uh, very complicated modeling solution. solution. And, uh, but this work, especially when we are uh, in, in an operational context, when we have uh, performed before simulations and we have decided well, which are the <coughs> parameters, and uh, usually in there is an initial phase of, of, the, of the problem where we have to test parameters, doing, doing things, try things, and then we, we just run a small chance of components. We, let's say, calibrate or observe what is going on almost in, in each small group of, of components and then for the, in the final configuration we put all together in a unique modeling solution <coughs> and we go from the input to the output. Potentially what you are doing here, even in separating the bases, uh, you, you can create a, a, ch a chain without any intervention if you know some critical detail actually they can take a lot of time to to get and having the whole work done automatically in a single shot. 